This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Hello, I'm Paul Throt, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. Episode four, Keyboard Shortcut Essentials. I'm convinced uh, with decades of experience using Windows that you cannot be considered efficient in any way or an expert or power user, however you want to phrase it with Windows without understanding some of the basic shortcuts. I also happen to be a writer, so I like to keep my hands right on the keyboard, but it's always helpful to be able to make things happen quickly without having to jump over to the mouse or you know, right click on things and just figure them out. If you know some of these basics, you can just maneuver around Windows much more efficiently. So some of the basics, obviously, if you can hit the Windows key on your keyboard, start comes up, everybody knows that. What you might not know is that you can also do that by typing control plus escape. So if you don't have a Windows key on your keyboard, which is actually next to impossible these days, um, there is another way to trigger that. Of course, you are gonna want a Windows key on your keyboard because most of the keyboard shortcuts we're gonna talk about today involve the Windows key. So if you look at the desktop and you consider the taskbar and you go left to right, you can see there's a widgets interface over on the far left of the taskbar, that start button that, that we just brought up the start menu with, some what I will call taskbar items that Microsoft puts in Windows for you, and then some shortcuts, which in this case Microsoft has also supplied. But your PC, PC maker might put some there. You can put your own there. You can remove Microsoft's shortcuts. Um, and we'll get to all that. And then on the far right, you see the system tray, or what Microsoft is now calling in Windows 11, the taskbar corner for some reason. Uh, this has some icons down here, a clock and a date display, and then the show desktop interface. All of these things can be controlled with the keyboard. So for example, the widgets interface, Windows key plus W will target the, toggle the display of widgets, which is happening nice and slowly here. Uh, but we can just toggle that back off, that's fine. Um, like I said, Windows, the Win key, the, the Windows key will bring up the start menu. Windows key plus S, or curiously, Windows key plus Q will bring up the start, in, the search interface rather. So I don't know why both of those are exactly the same, but they both act as toggles. One of the other interesting things about search is you don't need to actually bring up the search interface. Just type the, start, the, the Windows key and start typing. So if you type from here, it goes immediately into search. You don't need to bring up search. Um, task view is the next one over. Same thing, Windows key plus tab in this case will bring up task view, which has that desktops interface we talked about earlier. This is the virtual desktop feature in Windows. And then the third uh, taskbar item from left to right is chat, which is a Windows team, I'm sorry, Microsoft Teams interface. Windows key plus C will bring that guy up. And then we're gonna get rid of that. Nobody wants to use Teams. These applications that you're, or shortcuts that you're pinning to the taskbar can also be accessed be the keyboard, and in this case, you're gonna use Windows key plus a number. So this file explorer, it looks like it's the fourth or fifth item here, but it's really the first of the shortcuts that's available there. So Windows key plus one will launch file explorer, or whatever shortcut you happen to have first. If I reverse the order of these things and I do Windows key plus one again, this time it will be Microsoft Edge because that's in the first position. And it goes right down the line. Obviously, if you have 27 items here, it's gonna be a little unwieldy to use that. Um, you can also access these shortcuts jump lists by doing Windows key Alt plus the number. So for, for File Explorer, you'll see this list of shortcuts that are items that are pinned to the top, frequently accessed items on this particular computer, and then some standard shortcuts, um, these will differ from application to application, but you can also access those, those jump lists. The thing that's really interesting about all of those items that I mentioned is you can get rid of all of them, ex with the exception of start, um, by going into settings, the settings app, which by the way is Windows key plus I, if you want to do it that way. Uh, go to personalization, go down to taskbar, and this will let you turn off those, the four items, which includes widgets over on the side. So if I actually turn all of these things off, you can see they disappear from the taskbar. I can also right click each of these items and unpin them. I'm not gonna do that now because I need to use this computer for other demos, but uh, the idea here is you could literally get rid of everything except for this one start item. And you can still access everything we just accessed before. So Windows key plus W brings up widgets, even though it's not there. 
you know, Windows key plus tab will bring up task view, even though that uh, button isn't there on the uh, on the taskbar. So that's something you can do if you want to free up some real estate there and uh, access those functions. It all still works fine. You don't need to have those things uh, right there on the desktop. So kind of moving past that, uh, I mentioned some of the things that are over here on the right side of the taskbar. So how do you get to that stuff? So Windows key plus A brings up the quick settings interface, which you would typically get by clicking any one of these three icons over here on the right. Um, if you click on this item here, you'll get a notifications pane. Sorry, I did that twice. And a calendar pane. You can also access those with a keyboard, just Windows key. Oops, I did the wrong one. Sorry. Windows key plus N. You can think notifications is why that might come up. Get rid of that. And then there's uh, at the far side, I can barely see it down there, but is show desktop. Now to make show desktop make sense, let me open some applications. I probably should have done that with the keyboard. But so I have three applications running. I can't see the desktop. I want to access the desktop. You could mouse down into that far, far corner and that will toggle show desktop or just type Windows key plus D and that acts as a toggle. So if you do it again, those applications all come back. The other way you can do this, this isn't as um, easy, I guess, but you can also do Windows key plus M. That will minimize all of the applications that are on screen and let you see the desktop. But if you do Windows key plus M again, it doesn't work. Um, you have to do a different keyboard shortcut to bring them back, which is Windows key plus shift plus M. So when you do that, um, they will all come back. One other one I'd like to mention, this is kind of interesting. If you have a uh, window that is focused, so you're using some application, it could be Microsoft Word, it could be use the Microsoft Store like I have here. You know that if you move this thing around, you get this little snap layouts guide, which is really nice. But you can access that from the keyboard as well. So with this thing, with any application focused, you can type Windows key, oh, let me get that rid of that, sorry. Windows key plus Z, that brings up snap layouts, but inside the window. And then you can choose a layout from using any one of those numbers. So I'll choose four, and then you'll see you get another instance of uh, the layout guide, and I'll choose one, and that will actually pop that window up there. You get snap assist, and you can go on from there. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. The last one I'd like to share is kind of unrelated in some ways to the, the uh, shortcuts we just discussed, but it's, it's, a, it's a personal favorite of mine, and it's something I just happen to use all the time. In fact, this might be, uh, this might be in some ways my favorite um, key, uh, keyboard shortcut. And it's, there's a way to bring up a window menu. So if you think about, I gotta be careful about which, <laughs> make sure all these applications support it, because some modern applications might not. But if you think about a, a classic window, there's an icon up here in the corner, and you can click that thing, and you bring up a window menu, which has various options. Uh, minimize, maximize, close, etc. So one of the things I like to do is I'll be working in an application. I have another application that I'm referring to. I'm kind of moving back and forth between them. And obviously, you can do Alt-Tab to move between them. But I like to do, it's the, the shortcut is Alt, it's Alt-Space, which brings up the menu, and then N, in my, in my case, is the one I use all the time to minimize it. So you can access that window menu by typing alt space, which is an unusual one, granted, but this goes back to the very earliest days of Windows. Uh, you could also maximize it. I don't actually use it for that purpose, but if you wanted to hit X to maximize it, I usually hit N. That minimizes it. Um, I just think that's a cool keyboard shortcut. So there's a lot more, I mean, a lot more. And I intend to cover a lot more keyboard shortcuts in future episodes, but I kind of wanted just to get started with the things that you would use when you're interacting with the desktop and uh, the things that, frankly, I think most Windows users should just understand. And that's about it. So thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. And as a reminder, we'll have new episodes of Hands-On Windows every Thursday. Thank you for watching.